But here's the thing. We're going to talk about note taking. Note taking is super important in college because it is the foundation of success. All right. You are going to have professors that are going to stand in front of the room and tell you verbally the notes that you need to write down. Okay. They're not going to have a PowerPoint. Some of them, they're just going to tell you, and it's up to you to understand what they're saying and write it down in the notes, or they're going to say, read chapter three for Tuesday. It's up to you to write notes of what's important from chapter three, because you can't just read the whole chapter every night, like five nights in a row. That's not practical. Okay. So here's the thing. At early college high school, it's, it's our job to prepare you to be successful in college. All right. So we are going to build that foundation. We are going to help you to learn those skills so that when you get there to college, you are able to do it. And I know at first you're going to be like, man, these Cornell notes, they're so complex. They're so boring. There's so many parts to them. But I promise you, if you apply yourself now, it will pay off later because you'll know these skills and then you can modify them later. But right now we're going to learn the foundation. All right, so the notes have a template. We're gonna talk about that in just a few moments. If you wanna take your notes online, you can download the template in your English classes. This is what the template looks like, has various sections, and I'm gonna talk with you about what goes in each section. Okay. So in the notes part, the body of the notes, you're just writing down the information that your teacher gives you or your professor is, is delivering or you're writing down the information you're gathering from that chapter, okay? Now here's the catch. You do need to use two strategies listed on the side to help you remember and identify important information in your notes. So if you look there on the side, you can highlight, you can color code, you can use circles, you can underline, you can put pictures in your notes, you can even bold things. You can think of other strategies to add if you have some other ideas about how to really identify important information, but you must use at least two strategies in your notes. Remember, the goal here is to give you the skills to know how to take quality notes and then later, you can, you can modify it if you'd like. But for now, this is where we start. Okay, so then you're gonna do a column on your notes for questions. On your notes, you wanna write three higher level questions, okay? And here's what those higher level questions do. They connect to life, they connect to other things that you've read, or they clarify specifics from what the lesson was about. Okay, so here's the deal. Sometimes students, they raise their hand, they say, I don't understand step three. Okay, but maybe step three had like 10 parts in it. And then the teacher starts explaining again, the whole class rolls their eyes. They're like, I already know all this. Okay, it's not that the student didn't understand all of step three, because remember it had a bunch of parts to it. It's that there was a part of it that maybe they didn't understand. So the idea with these notes is higher level connecting questions and also clarifying specific questions. What you don't wanna ask is, what is the definition of, cause that's in the notes right there. You don't need to ask that question. That's in the notes. That's not a higher level question. Okay, so you're asking questions that can't be directly answered in the body of the notes, all right? And here's why you're doing that. You're doing it, especially in the online learning landscape, because you're not gonna have the flexibility to go talk to your teacher before school or sit down with your teacher at lunch or stop by their room after school to ask a question. Okay, your teachers are gonna have tutoring times and of course they will make further appointments. They will reply to your emails, of course. But if you have a tutoring time with your teacher and you get there and you don't have your questions planned for the teacher, then you may not get your question answered. All right, and that would be a problem because then you'd be confused, okay? So, and this, this won't be the last time you're gonna be in online learning, all right? Because if you think about it, online learning is part of the world we live in. Right now you're in online learning, but maybe later you wanna get a master's degree and maybe you're in the military and you're gonna be moving a lot. And so you decide online is the right way to get your master's degree, all right? And in online learning, this, this is the landscape of it, all right? You don't see your professor as often, and so you have to be prepared for when you get the chance to sit and talk with them, okay? Um, you might forget the questions if you don't have them written down, all right? All right, and then you're gonna put a summary in your notes. So the summary goes at the end, and here's the whole point of the summary. The whole point is to help you check if you understood what the notes were about, okay? The point is to 
ask yourself if you understand why this is relevant. So students always say, well, why are we learning this? Well, we're learning it because it ties into either how you're going to pass this class right now, or it ties into your goals in the future and a career choice that you're going to choose. So it's relevant. And writing that summary helps you focus on the relevancy of why are you doing this, all right? It's just one more step in asking yourself if you understood the material and if you're thinking beyond the notes, all right? So if you think about the levels of thinking that we're trying to apply, taking notes or copying notes down from a PowerPoint, that is the lowest level of learning because all you're having to do is copy it down, all right? But then when you have to evaluate what's important out of those notes, well, now you're moving a little higher in your learning. You're challenging your brain a little bit more. Well, now you have to connect relevancy with your higher level questions. You gotta think critically about questions to evaluate those notes. And finally, in writing a summary, now you're checking for understanding, you're reflecting on your notes. Again, you're tying in that relevancy. You're thinking critically about those notes. So what you've done is you've taken the act of writing notes down, which is a basic level, and you have now applied higher level thinking. So imagine you're in a college class, you're doing all of these things. It is helping you soak in the material and learn the material, right? Super important, okay. So in the summary section, again, you're checking for understanding. It's allowing you to connect to the notes and reflect on the relevancy. Here's the deal. If you can put yourself into the material you are learning, there is that much more of an opportunity for you to remember it. Think about that. Think about lessons that you've learned where there was something in it you were interested in or something that you could connect to in your life. All of a sudden, you're able to remember that material. That's what the summary is doing. It's offering you an opportunity to connect yourself to what you're learning so you care about it and you remember it, all right? Super important. Okay, and then when you take the time to reflect on your notes, you remember them, that's awesome. And finally, in language arts, it is one of those skills, reading and writing, the only way to get better at them is to do them, is to practice them. So it's giving you one more chance to write. So in that little summary, you are writing a little paragraph and you're helping yourself get better at writing. Every time you write, you're helping yourself improve at writing. Okay, so you only need one summary page for the topic of your notes. So let's say that you are taking notes over the history of New Mexico. Okay, and you have like seven pages of notes now. I don't know if you're gonna have seven pages of notes, okay? But if you had seven pages of notes, you don't have to write a summary at the bottom of every single page, okay? You can wait until page seven at the end of your notes and then write your summary, okay? That is a, that is a guideline we have at early college high school. Some schools may view that guideline differently, but at early college high school, we say you can wait all the way to the end of that topic to then write your summary, okay? And then, you should include a page number on your notes. This is kind of an element of your binder that you're setting up. So have a chat with your teacher. She'll help guide you on where your notes go in the binder and how to organize those. Because organization is another key to success in college. There are a couple things that your teachers are going over with you at the beginning of the semester that are the pillars of success in college, all right? Organization, note taking, being able to keep a calendar and understand the dates, being able to find the dates on the syllabus and understand what the goal is of this class and what you're supposed to learn, being able to use the electronics that you're being told to utilize in those classes. Are those are the pillars of success in any class, but especially in college, all right? So here's the deal. You can do this. You can do this. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, these notes sound overwhelming. I can't believe this. What have I got myself into? Guys, you're here because you're supposed to be here. I don't think it's an accident that you were accepted to early college high school or that you were accepted to Memphis Valley High School, all right? There's a purpose and a reason, okay? You can do this. You can do this one step at a time. You can do this, all right? I'm proud of you. And we, your teachers, we are here for your success and we'll be with you every step of the way, I promise.